Hi folks, I'm Kwabano of OpenMV, and today I wanted to talk about the OpenMV Cam Pure Thermal. This is our latest OpenMV Cam product that we were introducing today, and it features the highest level of feature support that we've built for any OpenMV Cam on the market today. So, what makes this possible is the STM32H743XI uh, package. This is the largest package STM offers for the STM32H7 and it features 168 I.O. pins, which we've connected a lot of fun stuff to. So let's get into those details. First, on this guy, we have a 800 by 480 LCD touchscreen that supports up to five finger touch. You've got 24 bit color, it refreshes at 60 Hertz, and you can do gestures based on those five fingers touching the screen. You can get point of contact when it happens, contacts lifting, you can get pinch to zoom action, uh, zoom out, swipe up, down, swipe left, right, whatever you want. That's all built in. And we've got a great driver that detects these during interrupts so that you can actually structure a GUI and have that display on this product in order to do something useful. Also, backlight dimming support works using a timer PWM. So you're going to be able to really do whatever you need in order to make this screen work functionally in the environment that you're in. Next up for imaging, it supports both the OV5640 and the, a FLIR Lepton at the same time. So we've known a lot of customers have been asking for this and we finally brought it to you. Now the OV5640 is running at uh, the 80 megahertz pixel bus. So you're gonna be able to get the same performance that you're getting on an OpenMV cam uh, H7 Plus. Additionally though, you have the FPC model of the OV5640 and so this is going to allow you to do autofocus support. And so this camera can actually focus on an image that is up to one inch away or any distance. Next up, with the FLIR Lepton, just like our regular OpenMV cam, you support, we support any FLIR lepton that is on the market. So you can plug in a 1, a 2, a 2.5, a 3, or a 3.5. And then for some FLIR leptons that have radiometry support, that's automatically enabled in order to make sure that you have a correct uh, calibrated thermal image. Now, we know a lot of folks have asked for, can we actually get the pixel value, the exact temperature for the FLIR lepton? And so the OpenMV Cam Pure Thermal has that feature built in. The FLIR Lepton image is returned as a floating point 2D array where each pixel is the temperature in Celsius. You can then plug that array into NumPy on board and that's gonna allow you to do whatever kind of calculation you'd like with that pixel array. Uh, finally, you can convert that pixel array into an image object and then use things like fine blobs to actually detect boundaries of pixels and then use get stats to actually calculate whatever pixels are in a color threshold there and get the exact temperature of a region of interest that you're looking for between a certain range. Next up, there's a distance sensor on board and that distance sensor is in the same line with all the camera sensors. And the reason we added this distance sensor is so that you can actually um, triangulate and calibrate where the thermal image ends up in the field of view of the color camera. So using that distance sensor, you can adjust the scaling and shifting of that thermal image so that it perfectly aligns with the color image of whatever object you're looking at. And so that's going to be on board too, right next to the cameras. And that's the STVL53X sensor. And it supports up to a two meter long distance away from the system. Now, we replaced the IR LED on this system. So instead of using IR LED 4 on the OpenMV Cam firmware, now you have a high brightness white LED. And this is going to let you take um, pictures using like a flash like functionality with this system. And if you want more functionality, we also have a buzzer on board the system that's going to let you actually make the OpenMV Cam make audible alerts to folks. And the buzzer supports both frequency and volume control. Next up, we have 64 megabytes of SD RAM. And so this is the maximum amount of SD RAM you can hook up to one bank on the STM32. 
And this is going to let you actually have one megabyte of buffer space for JPEGs and then 63 megabytes for the frame buffer. Um, and this is super useful now because we've added in new functionality to the OpenMV cam where you can actually create a single buffer mode, double buffer mode, or triple buffer mode, or finally in buffer mode for video buffering. And all these different buffers use up RAM. And so with the extra memory on board, you're not going to have a problem having enough memory to support whatever the highest frame rate modes you want with the STM32. Next up, we've got an SD card slot that works as normal. Support for FAT16, FAT12, FAT32, and XFAT, along with SD card regulars, um, SDHC cards, and SDXC cards. We also have 32 megabytes of quad spy flash on board, just like the OpenMV Cam H7 Plus, so that you can put uh, neural network assets on board that flash drive without having to burn any SD card space. Now, What's super awesome about this system is that for all those features I just talked about, they do not use the regular I.O. pins, including the WinC1500 on board, that you're going to be able to use that for um, Wi-Fi debug, which is now working, allowing you to connect to an open MVCAM wirelessly, along with um, MJPEG streaming over RTSP. But again, for all those features, you have a separate set of open MVCAM shield connectors. These use the same pins as a regular OpenMV cam. So you can take the same scripts and put those scripts and work with a shield for the regular OpenMV cam products that you have. But you don't have to worry about any of those pins being used already by any of this stuff on board. So you've got your spy bus here, you've got your CAN, you've got your I squared C, you've got your RX and TX for your async UART, you've got a DAC and ADC pin, and you also have servo drivers and PWM on every pin and interrupts on all the pins. Next up, for folks who want to do professional level debugging with this product, we actually have a real JTAG connector on board. So you can attach a nice um, Seger JTAG device and really develop custom firmware if you feel like for this board without having to use any of our tools or at least debug appropriately. We also have the standard OpenMVCAM debug header here along with uh, the pure thermal debug header. Next up, there is a 32 kilohertz RTC clock on board. And so this is a big thing that we know folks have been asking for too. And with this feature now, you can finally keep the time and date on the system and you don't have to worry about uh, files having the date of zero always like they were created in 1970. Awesome feature about this also is that we're going to input support in OpenMV ID for it to automatically set the time and date of the RTC module on board the OpenMV cam whenever you connect. And so this is going to automatically take care of setting up the time and date for you. So with this product, whenever you save a file, now the time and date will be correct as long as you have a battery powering the system at all times. Let's talk about that now, actually. So what we added to this system is something that we've wanted to do for a while, which is real LiPo battery charging support. So with the OpenMV Cam Pure Thermal, you can plug in a 1S lithium ion battery and it'll be charged to be a USB when you plug in the USB. And then when you remove the USB, the system will continue to run off that battery. Awesome. And so this is going to finally let you use the OpenMV cam in a way where it's put into a remote situation and it can work on the go. And so with OpenMV cam Pure Thermal, this is our first product where we've actually prototyped that technology and got it working for everybody. You also have a power button so that you can actually turn the system off and on. That's there too. So that makes it so you don't have to run your battery the whole all the time. We don't have that obviously on the current OpenMV cam. You also got a boot and reset button on the other side in order to put the system into whatever mode you need to put it in. Finally, on the right hand side, we've got USB-C. And so we're moving to the USB-C connector as USB micro is starting to become obsolete. And we have HDMI. And so this is one of the biggest features that we prototyped to date and shows off the power of the STM32H7. So using the same data bus that we use to power the LCD screen, we have a HDMI to a, a, a basically HDMI chip sitting on board that listens to that and generates the HDMI signal to drive a HDMI screen. And this feature can work at the same time as the LCD screen, as long as you're using the resolution the LCD screen supports, which is 800 by 480. And so most commercial uh, LCD screens will display that and you can actually get dual monitor support going. 
Now, if you just want to have the HDMI operational, we have support in our driver for, to, for you to turn that only on, and then you can increase the resolution output you want up to full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. Now, there's a caveat there, full HD, there's not enough bandwidth to actually update the screen while displaying it, so you're only gonna be able to do a static image with full HD, but it's cool that the OpenMV cam can actually drive that kind of resolution from technically a microcontroller. But more realistically, we can easily do, with plenty of available bandwidth, regular HD images. And so this is 1280 by 720, and you're going to have no problem at all being able to output that image, take in camera data at the same time, draw it on the screen, do, do whatever types of processing you want, and update the display. No issues. You can also output that over Wi-Fi, too, at the same time. And then last but not least, we included the SparkFun Q URIC connection so that you're going to be able to easily connect SparkFun sensors to this product. We put that on board because SparkFun has been one of our biggest distributors and we want to enable folks to actually easily connect to their products. But this bus also will let you connect this camera to Seed Studios Grove connection along with Adafruit's also uh, along with Adafruit's bus. And so we put all these things on board to make this product super useful for anybody building something out of it. So a thing to understand at the OpenMV Cam Pure Thermal is our, our goal with this product wasn't to set a cost that the system has to meet at, uh, at the end. We wanted to really develop it without any bounds on how much it would cost, but put all the features in that customers really wanted and then try to make this guy have the features that people need and not worry about the cost of how everything would end up. And so it is a little expensive um, in the $200 category, but if you have uh, money to available, um, we really like if you could back this product and help bring it into reality. Um, the reason why I'm putting out this video and an appeal for you to help us and to actually support this guy is that our relationship with group gets um, and future products that we can do really depend on whether or not this guy is successful and there's a market for the OpenMV cam moving into the thermal space. Um, so for example, if you are interested in seeing a FLIR boson based OpenMV cam, we want to pursue an idea like that where we attach an OpenMV cam to the back of a FLIR boson and a FLIR boson, for example, is a, 600, is a 640 by 480 thermal camera that has a much higher FPS. And so we have ideas to build an OpenMV cam based on that. We'd also like to build something I like to call deaf thermal, where we're going to put two FLIR leptons located um, a certain distance away with a OV5640 in the middle or another camera, as long as we can buy it. And that's gonna be the first product on the market that allows you to do depth thermal imaging. And so this is something we also wanna build. Finally, we'd also like to introduce FPV thermal, which is basically take an OpenMV cam pure thermal like this and then strip off all the excess parts and make something that's very small and tiny that allows you to do combined thermal and uh, regular images at the same time and then being able to stream that over Wi-Fi or um, NTSC to a FPV goggle screen so that you can have thermal and combined color imaging at the same time. And so all these product ideas that we want to build um, really depend on the success of this guy. So if you have, if you have available funds and you can, um, please support this product and help bring it into reality. And you're going to be helping us move into the thermal category and really build a lot of cool things of thermal. And you're going to get an OpenMV Cam Pure Thermal, which I promise is one of the best OpenMV Cam experiences that you're going to have. We really pushed our system to the limit in order to support this guy. Let me just talk about that if, in a, let me just talk about that for a little bit before I end this video. So when we first started developing this guy, we realized that our firmware had to be incredibly improved. In order to support all these sensors at the same time, um, we had to rearrange a lot of things in our code. For example, the STM32H7 is a real sock. It actually has different power domains and different buses connecting those different power domains together. And we actually had to learn about where you needed to place DMA buffers in which memory regions in order to make sure that performance did not crater when you had multiple different devices all using the same bus at the same time. 
For example, placing the FLIR lepton driver that captures the image from the FLIR lepton and putting that in the same domain as the OpenMVCAM, uh, as the S, excuse me, as the OV5640 causes issues where the buses lock up um, and that they're using too much bandwidth from each other. So we had to do subtle things like rearranging DMA memory addresses to put things in the right domain. Really getting into the chip architecture was what made this product possible. Being able to do HDMI actually in the background while all this other stuff is going on took some effort. We had to put things in the right memory locations in order to get the hardware to actually work in the right way. Similarly, in order to get Wi-Fi debug working and all these other things at the same time took a lot of effort. But by going forth and working on such a high-end product and working on these different integration things at the same time, we really improved our firmware game and what we can deliver to everybody. And so we'd like to continue building really, really cool products like this where we push the system to the limit. And the hope is the features that we develop on board this flow downstream to everybody else. So again, please back the OpenNVCAM Pure Thermal and make it a reality. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.